I have just seen fish lice. Those those whitish whitish little dots on the giraffe nose snout. They move. They move around. So there are the fish lice. And the fish lice are crustaceans. So no wonder formalin and malachite green did not kill them. So I'm gonna have to give them a Dimilin X with an active ingredient Diflubenzerone. I think this is the problem that has been having with, with all the flicking of the fins and the rubbing and flashing and uh, just a trivial fish lice. I'm surprised I haven't noticed it before. I was looking at this little spot on several fish, like, I mean, this giraffe doesn't have this at all, bush, but both of the uh, Wite or Congo giraffe catfish, they both have it. Some koi have it, I guess. Probably two of the Isok barbs have it, seven striped carp. Yeah, I can see it. That's probably why that whiteness by the dorsal, I'm, I'm sorry, adipose fin on that big giraffe and the whiteness on the, on the pectoral fin. It's probably for the same reason. So some of the new coming fish will introduce fish lice or plenty of uh, little uh, wildlife can make it through the shade cloth covered fish house and the little reptiles, little snakes, insects, snails, they can get in here and uh, bring fish lice on them or any other dangerous parasite or bacteria so there is always this concern you can have the best husbandry and treat everybody in quarantine for months and months and then a water moccasin or cottonmouth snake gets in here which dwells on land but hunts in the water and always carries all kinds of dangerous stuff on, on it yeah this, this those spots over there they move come on happy his name is happy yeah, right in the snout. That yeah, did you see that move? They move around. Gets inside the 15,000 gallon filter or inside here. Goes for a dip. Goes back. And you will never know that you now have a bunch of parasites. new parasitic cultures in your in your water in your tanks yeah I've seen this spot for a long time I'm you see the spots by the by the uh, adipose and on the pectoral but those don't move those look like uh, rubbing wounds or uh, I don't know some kind of See, the other giraffe has them too. These are both Congos. Well, this is Happy and this is Con Congo. That's their nicknames. Happy is a rescue and Congo we bought ourselves. Okay. I'm glad I... I'm glad I, s I found the problem. I hope this is the only problem. But Dimilin X kills all kinds of uh, crustacean parasites, fish lice, and uh, anchor worms, and a few other, a few others. It's very, very mild. It's almost impossible to overdose. It doesn't affect filtration. So all, all in all, this is a godsend medicine for these kinds of parasites.
Yes, happy. Thank you for showing them to me. <clears throat> and Pongo too showed it to me. Yeah, pavilion, like this main pavilion, a fish house number one, is a tarp covered structure. So it's covered with a tarp. I mean, you can't make it impenetrable. So uh, anything can make it inside and go for a dip in the, in the sump. Even like a wasp. I mean, we have plenty of wasps like this they, that use dirt that make nests where they get this dirt from they get it from the from the local ponds where all kinds of dangerous pathogens live so they take this dirt they fly inside they make nests they drop this dirt sometimes inside the sumps so that's not surprising any snake can can crawl here because this door is open usually all day long for ventilation for nice airing of the inside, makes a nice draft. So this is uh, pavilion number one. Pavilion number two is uh, is even uh, less protected. This is where the big 25,000 gallon tank is because it's covered uh, not with solid tarp but uh, with a shade cloth which is like a netting a very fine netting that keeps out mosquitoes for the most part but still I mean again you <laughs> there are holes they can they can dig under under the gravel and go inside there are holes here and there this is the pavilion number two Right now the curtain is down because it's cold, so the curtain uh, I unroll it when it's dark when it's cold. Snails can slither through. I mean this this is off, often open. This is the main entrance. So this shade cloth is often opened uh, for the people to come in and out when we have visitors. So yeah, I'm sure we have a lot of pathogens coming with uh, coming in with uh, with the rescue fish because we. If we have no reason to, we don't quarantine. It's it's a judgment call, and yes, it's risky, and I don't recommend it. But yeah, we don't quarantine almost 75% of the fish, maybe 90%. I've never tried to calculate it, but uh, parasites and pathogens can come on them. Even though, I mean, we pre-treat some of them with a salt bath and potassium permanganate even if we, if we don't quarantine but uh, then again wildlife wasps can bring contaminated dirt to build the nests inside they fly, they fly in and out all the time oftentimes find they, they bring this little dirt particles and little balls clay balls or sand balls and then they stick them where, where they please inside the fish house I mean I, I see their nests one here and there and and I have to destroy them like that one over there yep that's a fresh nest that's a fresh nest anyhow I mean, this is life. 
and wild nature. And you just have to learn to, li to live with it. Once in a while they can bring a bad parasite or a bad bacteria that makes it in into your sump. I mean a snake can slither up those walls rather easily, making it into the sump. A reptile, a snail. I mean we have snails, I don't know where they come from, but they came here from somewhere, so they must have brought something with them too. Like the infestation right here. This is a recent infestation, we haven't had it. We've had this infestation of snails only for about a year, coming from this sump. So yeah, that's uh, this is very much bio-insecure operation. It's out in the wild, we have to air it out. This door is usually open, and the other door over there is open to create a nice draft. And uh, bring in fresh air. Let's Congo again. I just saw them this morning and they didn't move for me. I thought, well, what are those little whitish bumps, light colored bumps on their snouts? They didn't move for me in the morning. That's happy. He's got mouth more and bigger. Fish lice. And then I saw them move. The water's been cold too, so maybe that's why they didn't, they didn't move much. The help is coming. They still feed and everything, but they're kind of thin. For giraffe catfish, I and mean, look at that bush. It's got a huge tummy. Both bushes do, but both Congo, Congo and Happy are kind of lean. The small tummy, as bush again. Without a bulging tummy, which is for a catfish that's fed almost all it can eat, is abnormal. They have to be fat and happy, or I mean, fat, whatever. Not a beast, but with a full tummy and happy. So that's again the four Isa barbs. These are the two sick ones. You see the turbid skin and that movement that one of them just made. That's parasite biting them and they're reacting to it. That one on the bottom tried to flash. The koi, we call them unicum. Those things on it, he was trying to rub off the parasites and damaged his scales over there. That's bloody spot from damaging the scales. That hole on this koi, I don't know what this is about, but this is something recent. But anyhow, many koi don't look healthy and they clamp their fins because of the parasites. Many don't, but some do. So I'm glad I found it. Demilion X is coming. Good thing you can also buy Demilion X in, in, uh, for ponds that can treat tens and tens of thousands of gallons which makes it affordable. I'm pretty sure those little white bumps on the side are also from are also fish lice or their eggs, cysts. And the scuff marks on the sides are from rubbing on the rocks and on the bottom trying to get them off. So that, that all comes to a complete and uh, logical picture.